Hey everybody, my name is Lee Fraser, and I'm a senior technical specialist for Autodesk and I've been having a lot of fun with the new motion graphics tools inside of my 2016 extension 2 and I came up with a fun example that I thought was pretty useful so I thought I'd run through it here. This is just a simple little car and it's made up of a hierarchy of a bunch of different pieces and when I create a motion graphics network out of this the number of objects that are thrown into the network are equal to the number of pieces in the geometry that I had in this case selected. And if we go to the repro node you can see all of those pieces listed. I just happened to pick the rear bumper first and if we go all the way down you can see all those pieces listed. And this, these are pretty interesting. We can take and reorder these in here and there's lots of things that we can do that are potentially useful. But what we want to do in this case is actually reassemble our car. And to do that, you can see there's a couple of things. We've got the mass distribute node, and there's, uh, this gives you an indication of the actual number of pieces uh, of, of geometry that make up the model that I selected. And then I have a distribution type. And if I scroll down to this lower pull-down menu here selection, uh, I can pick initial state. And what that will do is take that first piece and put it back into position of all the, uh, of the original pieces that made up the car. The only problem is now, we don't have an index or something to identify each piece and where it belongs and that's where the ID node comes in. We can just add that to the ID and that just essentially keeps track of it for me. Now the reason I did all of this is to allow myself to take any of these pieces of geometry and use one of the other motion graphics nodes to distribute this in a variety of different ways and allow me some procedural flexibility over how this thing flies around or gets animated. So the simplest thing to do or the first thing I want to do is just take this random node and add it to the position. And just like that you can see uh, maybe potentially where I'm going with this. So we'll just maybe give uh, ourselves a minimum and maximum value and just like that we can go down and use our random strength to reassemble the vehicle. So we can just set some quick keyframes. I'll set a keyframe there and set a keyframe at frame 30. And just like that, we have our reassembly of our vehicle. Now, of course, there's other ways of doing this. There are just a linear strength. There's also a step strength that'll sort of pop those back into position. But I really like that random strength. That, that looks pretty good. Uh, the next thing I'll do is go to my spring node. And I'm just going to add a spring node just to make it a little more bouncy and, and maybe a little more fun and you can see what that looks like. But the great thing about the motion graphics tools inside of my 2016 extension 2 is they're, again, they're procedural and they're very flexible. So this is not an animation that might, might have been too terribly difficult inside of Maya prior to the extension 2 release. However, the procedural nature of this allows me to go back and make changes on the fly. Let's say I wanted to bring the assembly together from the X direction. Just like that, we can disable Y and Z and we'll see what our animation looks like that way. And if we decide, well, you know what, let's just go in the Y direction. Just by doing the opposite, we can turn off X and enable Y, and we have a totally new animation. So something like this is super simple to do, and again, hopefully shows the incredible power of the motion graphics tools inside of Maya 2016 Extension 2, and hope you guys get a lot of use out of it. Thanks for checking it out.